question two now. So it says, this is quite a good one. It says, determine the value of M for which the above mentioned statement is true. Okay, so let's quickly try to understand something here, guys. So what they're doing is they, they, they're taking the sum because that's what, let me rather use a different color. We know that sigma notation means they're taking the sum of all of this over here and they want the answer to be less than 500. Okay, so let's say for example what we normally like to do, let's go find term 1 quickly. So term 1 you find by just plugging in whatever this number is into the place of i, so that'll be like that, and that'll give you 256. Then we can find term 2 by doing um, 32 times 2 to the power of 5 minus 3, and that's going to give us 128. And then let's just find term 3 so we can try see what type of pattern is happening here. So that'll be 32, 2, 5, minus 4. And that's going to give us 64. So can you see what's happening? Uh, term 1 is 256, term 2 is 128, and term 3 is 64. So what's happening here is that if you had to add all of these numbers together, they want to know uh, what must M be, what can M be, so that the answer will still be less than 500. Because if n is a big number, like if n is 7, then these numbers are going to go on for too long, and the sum is going to be more than 500. So what I like to do is I treat this as an equal sign. So I'm going to say that the sum, oh, by the way, can you guys see that this is geometric? 256, 128, and 64. That is geometric, where the ratio is um, a half. If you battle to find the ratio, you can take term 2 divided by term 1, and that's a half. So it's definitely geometric, so we can use the sum to um, formula for a geometric. And so here we've placed it over here, and so we're going to say that the sum of the terms, we don't know how many terms there will be, is equal to A, which is term 1, which is 256, or we can actually say 500 over here because we said that we're going to make the sum. Remember we said we can pretend that it's an equal sign. So we want it to be 500. And then the formula is R, so that's a half, N minus 1 over a half minus 1. Now we're just going to try solve for N. So what I like to do here is at the bottom it's going to be negative a half. So I'm going to multiply the negative half over to the other side and that will give me negative 250 equals to 256 half N minus 1 and then I can divide by 256. But then don't round off or anything, guys. It keeps the answer more accurate, so it's minus 125 over 128. Rather keep it like that, equals to a half n minus 1. Then take the minus 1 over to the other side, and that's going to give us 3 over 128. Now, normally, if we're solving these types of equations, it would be easy, we would get something like 1 over 8 equals to 1 over 2n, and then you could somehow, you could change both of these numbers to become, uh, to have the same base. You know what I'm talking about, right? But in this one, if you had to try it, you'll see that it's not going to work. So when that doesn't work, you need to use logs. And so what we can say is that n is going to be equal to log half 3 over 128, and so n is going to be equal to 5.42. n is equal to 5.42. But that's not the answer, because they want to know what must m be. So we should know by now that the number of terms, to work out the number of terms, if you've looked at my previous sigma notation videos, you'll know that it's always the number at the top, which is m, minus the number at the bottom, plus 1. So the number of terms we just worked out is 5.42. Now you might be thinking, but Kevin, you can't have a decimal number of terms. I, I understand that. The reason this is happening is because this is actually supposed to say less than 500, but we made it equal to 500. So don't worry too much about that right now. Nothing's wrong, I promise. Um, and then we say equals to m minus 2 plus 1. And so if you had to go solve for m, you're going to find that m is equal to 6.42. So what this means is that M, because we don't want this, we don't want these to become too big because then they're going to go above 500, 6.42 is the upper limit. But you cannot have a decimal number here. So what is the, what is the, the, the biggest number that we could put here for M? I mean, the highest value that M could be is 6. So M would be 6 because 
If you put a 6 there, then we can be sure that the sum of these numbers will be less than 500. Now moving on to question 2.1.2, they want the sum to infinity minus the sum of the first four terms. So the sum to infinity formula is given over here. So the sum to infinity, if we quickly go work that out, it's going to be equal to a. Now remember we said a was 256 and the ratio was a half and so that's 512. And so if we had to go work out the sum of the first four terms now, which we use this formula, and so that's going to be a, which is uh, 256, and then the ratio was a half, and then we want the first four terms over a half minus one, and if you work that out, it gives us 480. And so this is easy, we can now say that the sum of infinity minus the sum of the first four terms is going to be 512 minus 480, and that's going to give us 32.